Today's episode brought to you in part by Squarespace, website creation and development platform. Well, for those of you that have been asking for an update about the status of the ship that got stuck in the harbor entrance, today you'll get your answer. Over the next days, the tugboats came out and gave multiple attempts at different tide levels, including this one where they had the freighter put into full forward thrust, which, uh, i sorry, but in my opinion, that was just clearly a wrong solution. The tugs are trying to pull the boat out from the side while the freighter is forcing himself into shallower ground. I could be wrong, but not a good idea. But, a little later on, they did figure out to use reverse thrust from the freighter, and I was happy to see that. So, let's see how they make out. Okay, so <laughs> as we enter into the tunnel, uh, you can see up here, there is, I've already disconnected the mount, that is our old tuner for the SSB radio. So it is not going to be used anymore, these wires are now obsolete. So I'm just going to cut these wires, like so, and okay. Oh, fuck you. And I just started uncoupling everything back here, but you can see this is where all our wires go through back into the port. 
So we're just gonna pull these ones through with the new wires attached. I don't need all of them. So I'll get rid of a couple of them in advance just to make the opening a little bit more easy to slide the new wires through because a couple of them have big ends on them. So that will be next. Okay, so this might look a bit of a mess, and it is, because I just dropped everything down from its mounts. And this is basically the backbone of the entire Raymarine system. This is our ITC, ITC5, yeah. This is our transducer converter, so this is the device that takes all of the multi-wire connections from depth sounder, speed, wind, all of that, and converts it into something usable in the CTOC interface so that it can be run into the backbone bus. So you can see where this one connects up into the CTOC interface. We have a backbone cable, the blue cable that goes up to the cockpit, and that's the one that is connected currently to the chart plotter. One CTOC cable that comes around to our autopilot, and another one that comes around to our compass, which is just behind me, and that's the electronic Evo compass for the autopilot system. So we are going to be replacing all of this. So I'm going to replace to remove all of this wiring 100% and replace it because they sent me everything brand new. So well, of course, why wouldn't we replace it? We don't know if there's been anything damaged in here, but we know all of my transducers are not working properly. So we suspect it's either the cabling or this device here. Something has been damaged when we had the lightning strike. So we're just going to remove it all and start from scratch. So easy to remove and then not so bad. It's not as bad as it looks for remove or for reinstalling, but uh, we'll have all new cabling to put in one piece at a time. And you guys will get to see that along the way. But for now, I'm just gonna pull all this out and then we'll start pulling the new wires through. So we'll start with the antenna cable, the big heavy one, cause it's just in the way and we don't really need anything that heavy for this purpose. Well, that's it. The data cable, same thing, not necessary. So we're pulling it through from this end Okay, so that's gone. But you can see I've left them from this end. The same thing, this one is way thicker than we need for a fish line going back through the next tunnel. So I'm just gonna pull this lead out from the nav station all the way through and that will make up more room inside this pipe because these pipes get clogged pretty quick and then of course it makes these wires much more difficult to pull through. So this one's unnecessary, this one's unnecessary. As you can see, it's already broken. And we're gonna use the thin cable as our lead to pull everything through. So this will be the one that we transfer all our wires through from to here to the nav station. Same thing from here, I'm gonna use this one. As you'll see, when I pull on this one, I start pulling it, and, and over here, it starts to move. So this is the one that we're gonna use for our fish line to pull the new wires through, right there. Okay, you ready? Yeah, ready. Is it coming through? Okay, I'm feeding through from here. Hang on. Pull a little bit. Okay. My end's going through. Okay, perfect. You got it? Yeah. Beautiful. I have all. Okay, so as you can see, all I did was just use some electrical tape and taped it to our thread wire that we used to pull through. Now I just take the tape off because we're going to use a different wire to pull it through the rest of the way to the nav station. So now this wire, these are our two new wires. So there's our backbone cable and our three net cable. They're going to stay. We're going to continue pulling them through. But this one, we're going to leave installed here as a fish cable for future reference, for future use. There was a piece of string in there before, but this is actually better and easier to tape to. So we're gonna leave this so it's tied off at both ends and we can use that in the future whenever we wanna, if we need to run more cables as we do this install. Another time, my butt, my toilet. This time is electric cable burned. Electric cable burned out, that's not yeah. good. No, it's wow. not good. Yesterday, air inside. I don't know, but uh, the motor was deteriorated. Yeah, yeah. 
was yes. full of uh, air, stick it, and I Who's don't know. Hair? I don't know because <laughs> this is normally the place for the air because. Mm. Mm, but. Do you realize that your shirt's the exact same color as your new toilet seat? That's so uh. cute. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Matching toilet and clothes. Wow. Oh, I don't think in eh? When I start the job, I don't think in that. But. Yeah, now I did so I finish. It's a time for close everything. Yeah, everything's working again. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> close everything. Always uh, fun. Happy time. Fixing toilets. Uh, yeah, happy hour time after. Yeah, it's almost happy hour time for me too, but I still got this to deal with over here. Oh. Because now we're wow. in the through holes. So, we have this part of the project. <laughs> through holes and transducers cool you can see there's my depth transducer and that's a new through hole in case we needed it but we don't because those are meant to be permanent installed but this is always good as a backup and it has a plug inside so if we ever need to plug that hole this will fit it exactly so we still keep this for our spare part to sit beside it and this one here this is our speed temperature sensor now the one thing I'm not sure of though is they sent me a third sensor which is this guy and this one's a tri-function multi-purpose sensor and I'm not sure exactly which one is going to be better but this one fits the exact same through hole size as what the depth sounder is so thinking I might just replace the depth sounder with this one because it serves both and I can still replace the paddle wheel the same as normal and that way we'll have brand new sensors but this one will always serve as a backup with extra features just in case so I think that's what I'm going to do. As you can see, we've got all brand new wiring and everything to run through the boat. So they got to start from here. And then I've got to go up around to my nav station. I've got to come up here into the mast because right up in here, this is where the wiring is for the wind, the wind vane sensor up on top of the boat. It comes down through this channel here and down under the floor and over into my nav station. So that is the wind transducer wire right there. So we're gonna hook that up as well. But right now we're at that fun part that nobody really loves is pulling a transducer and watching the ocean flood inside your boat. <laughs> Always a little nerve wracking when you see that little hole of light in the bottom of the boat and water gushing in. <laughs> yeah, somebody just heard me. Huh? <laughs> Didn't like the sound of that? No. <laughs> you really to do you, you do something like this now? You do it? Yep, so you better hurry up because I need you to help. <laughs> uh, you need to very, make very fast. Uh, I don't want to. Yeah. Swimming this night. That's why we got to do it quickly. Yeah, I finish. Uh, give me, give me two minutes, then I finish. I cover my two connection. Minutes. And counting. <laughs> Not too much point getting clean and dry for this job. It's going to be wet. So, yeah, basically we got the two transducers. I know the center, the one closest to center, is almost always the. Um, the depth sounder and then the paddle wheel for speed is off the side so this is the one we want so we're going to leave this one alone for now so i'm just going to make sure that uh, yep yeah, okay it's good fast captain fast okay unscrew it a little bit and pull okay it moved okay all right it's free. Now we got to remember this one needs to be pointed upwards. So it has a paddle wheel sensor and of course that paddle wheel needs to point towards the bow of the boat so that the water circulates past the right direction. So that's what the arrow's for. So when we insert it, we're hoping that this whole thing, I think that it's going to line up with the old through hull. I mean, they're usually pretty good about making their stuff, you know, switchable from generation to generation. So when I pull that out, we're going to have about two seconds and jam this in and I've already greased it, lubricated it because it comes with, you know, some silicone grease. So I've already done the O-rings. You can see the O-ring there and the O-ring there so that it twists on smoothly. Make sure no dirt in the seals, no hair. I think we're good. <clears throat> you ready? So once we pull this out, it's going to get ugly fast. <laughs> See fast, what I mean? Fast, <laughs> fast, fast, fast. Yeah, it's only so fast you can go. Make close your hands with the new one. Ready? Yes. 
was wet. <laughs> wet? <laughs> wow, for lucky you are like a speedy Gonzalez. Well, I think that started in. I can't tell. I'm just going to keep turning, uh, waiting for it to tighten. Yeah, okay. All right, it's tight. Good. Wow. <laughs> Look. <laughs> yeah, that was like a mini waterfall upside down. A very fast waterfall. Yeah, don't try this at home. Yeah, don't try this at home. We're not trained professionals. <laughs> no. Truthfully, I've only had to do that, I think, twice in the 15 or 16 years I've lived on this boat. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you get to do it when you're on the hard, hauled out for service. But sometimes you're going to do it in the water. And yeah, as you can see, you just got to be fast because that's a lot of water gushes in very quickly. Now, can you imagine if you had a, a hole that size? in the side of the boat somewhere from hitting something, how fast water would come in. That, that's only a hole this big, that diameter, look at that. That's like one and a half inches maximum. So that is a lot of water, my friends. So if you're ever now, gonna do this on your own, now it's be solid. fast. <laughs> but now it's solid. Now it's in, yep. Now I need to take and run the wire through, so I'm going to cut this old wire here because this we know is not working anyway, and then we can use the old wire to pull the new wire through and around to my nav station. And then another one that you have for what is that? <clears throat> well, that is just the speed sensor, a dedicated speed sensor. So I could put this one in as well if I want to. And then we'd have backup already installed. Alright. Well, don't we start tomorrow another time? Yeah, what the heck. Uh, oh, it's very dangerous. Once you're in, might as well keep oh, going, right? Wait, wait. It's no better than before you cut the you cut the cable? Yeah, I cut the other cable. Hmm. Does it work no, now? No. Oh, you are Yeah, actually, I don't like that that this part of the housing turned also. So no, I'm not going to touch that one. I'll wait until we haul out because we're going to haul out in the next, well, probably a month or so. So we need to do bottom paint and everything when before we go Panama, before we go through Panama. So we got that one out nice and easy. And this one is a tri data sensor, so it will give us uh, depth, speed, and water temperature. And if I put in the other one, this one, it's basically just a redundant sensor now for our speed and temperature. So I don't necessarily need this one to make the system work. I was just going to put it in as a backup, but I think we will leave that until we haul out because that through hull might be turning. And I don't want to risk starting any leaks that we might not be able to fix at happy hour. <laughs> so. We'll okay. leave that one. Okay. Let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> okay, we can do it. Because that one will sting like a viper, and I don't need that right now. So. Okay. No, yeah. we're lucky. We got this one out, so we'll just cut the wire, and I'll run the new wire out to here and into my nav station, and then we'll see where we're at, if we got enough daylight just to pull them through the rest of the boat. <sighs> okay. Yeah, we got enough. There's all enough to run all the way through and get right to the back where the ITC connector, the transducer converter is going to be located. So I think we're good. And now we might as well clean this mess up a little bit before yeah, yeah. we put it back together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right, I need uh, my dry rag because I need to tape these two wires together. Okay. <clears throat> Bring this wire. Stop here, this, okay, and this, and give you everything. Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I need just need to tape. My job. <laughs> but thanks. You want the tape? I think so it's the same inside. Yeah, that's all I need is the tape. Okay. Okay, I start to clean it. Eh? Yeah. Or, or do you want tape before the cable? No, I'll do a couple in there and then it's fine, but yeah, now we're just going to take this two lengths of cable and tape them all together every couple of feet to keep them in line. We get them around into my nav station, up into this mess, and then up into that tube that goes all the way down the side of the boat behind the galley and comes out at the back near the rudder post, and that is where we tie in all the electronics at the back of the boat. Sounds simple, right? No. <laughs> it's already going on two days. We've been here just taking stuff apart, getting the old wiring out, and now reinstalling the new wiring so but we're getting there one step at a time one wire at a time always remember that where is okay so where is the connection here well we're looking up in here because right here this is where the mast comes through all the wiring you can see i used to have to take these wires apart every year when we took the mast down to come through the uh the lock system going up through the hudson river and into the erie canal but these are the three, that's for all the masthead lights, so anchor light and deck flood lights, all that kind of stuff. They're all marked so you know which wire is which. And then down here, uh, uh, uh. now that's old antenna wires. Okay, great. But yeah, we follow down here and this is where... Yeah. Wow, we understand it now. Because yeah, this is where the masthead wind instrument yeah. is so now, now we, know. <laughs> we know why it is no longer functioning yeah it's that is very corroded yeah so there must have been some salt water get through one of those gaskets at the base of the mast at some point and it got onto this and that's what caused to wreak havoc yeah we need to change captain yep so yeah we definitely need to change that that is no good at all and we're going to change this piece of wire also that's coming off of that and still run a new one all the way to the back because we have it and we're running new wires through for the other two devices so I might as well do that one at the same time, right? No point waiting till later. Yeah. But at least this time Raymarine sent me a waterproof junction box, so that's nice. So this junction box will take the wires coming in from up the mast and the wires going out to the back of the boat and run them through this type of junction connector instead of course through a waterproof box so now that this waterproof box we'll put it up in here somewhere and stick it off to the side where it's not going to ever get wet and we'll go up and make sure we'll have a look through here while we're here tomorrow and uh, just see where that water might have come through so that we can fix that leak at the same time but this will be the next project for now i'm going to run the new wire from here just to get the wires run through so I can close that mess up a little bit and we can retire for the night. But then tomorrow, uh, once the wires are run through, yeah, we'll come back to this and tidy things up a little bit. All right. All right. Let's just get the wire run for now. We know what our issue is, so we'll cut this one and start running the new one from here. Okay, perfect. Kevin. We'll run it up in here so it can be buried up in here, no problem. So. Okay. All right, that's next. Back to work. Oh, got to finish. Yeah, see you. It's way past happy hour that's just not cool <laughs> yeah this is this is not a good state to be in at six o'clock at night i don't like that uh, at all so. but it's a big project and we need to finish so we just kept plugging away so. let's go okay yep yeah. Tight anyway. It's okay, ladies. 
I just want extra cable so I can run it up where I need to. So okay. that's fine. That gives us a little slack. Okay, good. Okay. Gracias. I'd like to extend a special thank you to Squarespace for coming on board to sponsor some of our SSL episodes. If you haven't heard of them, they are a full-featured website hosting, construction, and development platform. We had switched over to build our new SailingSophisticatedLady.com website on Squarespace about six months ago. You can see as we update our partners section that it is very intuitive and easy to find your way through. So if you are looking for new hosting or a place to build your new website, have a look at squarespace.com. Okay, so by light of a new day, we get back at our wiring project. So as you can see, we have completely cut out the culprit. <laughs> so it's dead. That will be effectively removed from the boat very quickly. And now we are going to start installing our new one that Raymarine provided with the, the new accessories. So, as you can see, this is not a waterproof, but definitely a water resistant housing with an internal terminal block. So the terminal block just fits right over there, which is very handy, just like so. And then these little grommets will lock the wires in place and keep them waterproof. So we've already got the inlet side hooked up. We've cut this one off back to some clean wire. This is where your wire strippers will come in very handy because if you try and use an X-Acto knife on this, there's always a chance that you will score the, the shield of the wires inside, which will cause, of course, it to corrode again, just even salt air. But you can see these ones have a good large size wire. So we're gonna use that on this here. And we're just gonna strip back maybe one inch is all we need. So we put that into the little hole on the wire stripper and squeeze and uh, just like that. It's perfect. Wire casing comes off, the shield is left fully intact. You can see here is our copper stranded shield wire there. And we also have this foil shield which encapsulates the entire wire. So we're going to twist back the foil shield and take that off so we don't need the foil at this moment okay and we twist together the shield wires now as you can see inside we've got four colored wires so these are all color coded to match for the wind instrument and we got our red blue yellow and green and then the bare shield wire so we just need to strip back one quarter inch off of the jacket of each one of these wires, which of course they're a little bit too fine for the wire stripper. So I'm just gonna do those the old fashioned way, sorry. I know right now my mom's going, Rick, stop that, don't do that. <laughs> which is true, because one time I did do this with heavier gauge wire and I actually broke a front tooth. <laughs> it wasn't good. Mom was unhappy. Okay. And you can see we've got brand new tin coated wire right in front. So everything is good. There's no corrosion in the wiring, no issues. So again, we're gonna remove the module from the case. And as you can see, these are all fine flat headed screws. So you just need a very fine flat head screwdriver to get in there and make sure that they're all loosened off, which they are. And then you just match up the color coding of the wire and attach them one by one. So the first one at the top, as you can see, yellow. So let's match them up in our harness here. We've got yellow. Now, very important to note that these terminal blocks do not need to be over tightened. They need to be tight so it holds the wire in, but if you put too much tension on, you'll just end up cinching down too much on that fine wire and actually causing the wire to almost split, at which, point, at which point it will become brittle. And then at some point, if any corrosion gets at it at all, it will just break very, very easily. So just tighten these down until you feel some traction right there, and then maybe a quarter turn, boom, lock it down and that's it. 
Okay, with all those tightened, you can see we've now got them all hooked in. Matching parallel connections, just a straight through terminal block. All it's doing is just joining the connections between the different colors. Like a rainbow. Like a rainbow. And if I didn't say before, remember to have this grommet threaded on the wire before. That's important because this is what's going to keep water from entering through the holes on the box itself. So now we can take this and you can see it has holes through the back and there's two mounting tabs right there. So we just take and we line those up and push them right into place like that and carefully and slowly line up the wire and push the grommet on and then next for the top so put the grommet in a comfortable place where there's no stress on the wire push it in place and just like so okay so now the last thing we want to do that i'm going to do is we're going to take some of our spray silicone this is like a waterproofing spray now this last one, I gotta admit, it lasted like 25 years since the boat was new, but obviously we have a little bit of a water leak or something that did come in there at some point and caused that. So just to keep any problems with the new wiring, we're gonna cover this with a fast dry silicone, which does not it's not like a grease that actually leaves a coating and attracts dirt or anything like that. This is just a silicone that we're gonna spray everything down with and let it dry on the contacts. Keep a paper towel under it to catch the drippings. Well, we're just going to spray everything inside the terminal blocks, and that's good. So now, with everything covered, we can take and put our top plate in place. And that would be this guy. And I've already got the little screws sitting in it, so now I gotta be careful not to drop them. I'm just gonna lay that in place, like so. And then we need our fine Phillips screwdriver. And of course, one's always gotta be the victim. Now I'll spend the rest of the day trying to find that screw. Because if your experience is like mine, as soon as something hits the floor, the floor becomes the twilight zone. Wow. You have a lucky. Got lucky this time. That doesn't happen often. We are sealed and ready. Now we have different options because it does come with two-way tape to adhere it to the back or screw holes or anything like that. But as soon as you do that, if you need to service it in the future, it becomes a problem getting at it because you also have to be able to take the case apart in order to get out the screws. Now you can see this other one up here, it's just left loose. And it's there floating because it's wedged in place under the pressure of the wiring, but it's that way so that when you need to get at it, you can pull this panel open and the panel just locks everything in place. So we're going to do the same thing with this. I'm just going to put it away from all where the center holes of the mast are, which are over here. And we're going to put it up under here and just wedged in place with the wiring to hold it there, just like so. And as you can see, that's in there and it's not going to move. And then we take our panel and mount it into position. And like so. Screws. And as you can see, we have our panel back in place all the way across. Other one is already in. Wiring all comes out through the center access hole here, down through the channel, and straight down into the floor. And then we have this cover here, and this is the center channel cover. So it's always a bit of fun to get into place, but it covers this whole thing up with a nice piece of wood. Okay, so basically we just slide this into place. And it locks onto these tabs right here, as you can see. So it slides in, and then we just put in one, two, three screws on each side. So we look after that next, and then we are finished at the mast. Hallelujah.
garbage. <laughs> Not even going to save this. Oh, guys, you can see. <laughs> this beautiful, eh? Look at our carpet. Oh, it's so beautiful. Our new carpet and it matches the new sofa perfectly. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so Should beautiful. I model on it? Make it more warm and runway model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Modello numero 4. Mm -hmm. Make more nice. warm and bright the room for me. I don't know, give me this sensation, this feel. Well, I used to have one of these in here years ago when we were first sailing and it lasted about three years so it was good and it's rubber back so it stays in place even if the floor gets wet when we're at sea which is a nice addition because when the floor gets wet when we're at sea and if you're holding on to something it still can be slippery you got to be careful but this gives you good traction but of course when it gets salt water or anything in it we have to take it out of the boat wash it and dry it after, yeah. after a big sail the same and we don't have a lot of dust then uh, go inside to the little Yes. Line. And this is a big, a big bonus is that it knocks all of the sand and everything off of your feet, which will normally end up in the bilge. So we can vacuum this or take it outside and shake it. And it just stops from a, a lot of, you know, even feathers from tiki or anything from going below the floor, they'll stick to the carpet and we clean off the carpet. No. So I'm very happy to have that back and it looks nice. 